Hello, my name is David Duran, and I am a clinical PsyD student at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology at Xavier University of Louisiana. I work together with Dr. Leonhardt on this presentation, and this presentation talks about the health disparity of age and gender in adolescent females for eating disorders and risk factors involved in the possible influence of Instagram. The national statistics on eating disorders reveal this age and gender disparity. The average age of onset is in late adolescence. As you can see in the image, 95% of eating disorder cases occur in people ages 12 through 25. The incidence rate of females is more than double that of males, um, while in some specific populations and disorders, it's even triple. The national statistic of adolescent females with eating disorders is just under 4%. Many factors contribute to adolescent females being vulnerable um, to developing an eating disorder, um, but individuals with, uh, compared to individuals of other ages and genders, but I'll touch on important risk factors and why Instagram might be playing a role in furthering this disparity. So relevant eating disorder risk factors um, that can increase chances of developing an eating disorder in female adolescents include thin ideal internalization and body dissatisfaction. Um, this is relevant because adolescent females are vulnerable to internalizing standards of beauty and appearance um, pushed on them by our culture, which is very prevalent on Instagram. So Instagram use for female adolescents have been found in numerous studies to be associated with these risk factors, such as body image disturbance, thin ideal internalization, disordered eating attitudes and behaviors, as well as negative well-being and lower self-esteem. The relationship between Instagram use and these risk factors have been shown to be mediated by processes of appearance social comparison and thin ideal internalization. An adolescent female might be using Instagram for a couple hours a day where they're scrolling through images and videos um, from other users. So they're able to engage in this automatic process of comparison with these other, these other users and their posts about their lives um, and their bodies. So filters and Photoshop um, help portray these unrealistic stereotypes and booty ideals um, so they are comparing themselves to these unrealistic standards from other people um, when they themselves are in the process of physical, um, cognitive, and emotional development. And so those are some of the risk factors. What, what can really be done about this? Um, so studies show there's some important protective factors that are especially important in preventative measures. Um, the, some of these include self-compassion and emotion regulation. Um, these protective factors can help guard against the internalization of these ideals and man manage distress um, that's caused by engagement with content on Instagram. Specifically, some best practices that have been found in studies are mindfulness-based interventions. They've been very effective in the treatment of adolescent females um, in helping build these um, protective factors um, for resilience. Particularly mindfulness self-compassion intervention studies show the development of these protective factors. Um, and another study of mindfulness stress reduction intervention shows, adol shows adolescents um, with body image concerns, they decrease um, and their disordered eating attitudes and behaviors improve just after eight sessions. These studies amongst others show some evidence-based practices um, which have important clinical and educational implications too. Um, and, the, and the goal behind a lot of these interventions and how they would best inform the adolescent females is to help create a more mindful Instagram use um, that would leave adolescent females less susceptible to the negative impact of Instagram. So some ways forward, these studies have shown that these mindfulness-based interventions are suitable for clinical use um, and also show the effectiveness of mobile-based interventions that help adolescents engage in mindfulness and self-compassion practices um, through application usage on a smartphone. Um, still much future research is needed to untangle the associations between Instagram and eating disorders, um, but also research is needed to, to show more effective interventions in this population um, to help decrease this health disparity. Um, so to recap, the health disparity of age and gender found in adolescent females for eating disorders um, needs attention and is especially relevant as um, the regularity of more Instagram use continues. And it's shown um, study after study to be associated with these eating disorder risk factors. And um, there's hopeful mindfulness-based interventions that help increase protective factors in this population while encouraging mindful use of the social media platform, um, but still more research is needed. And these are my references. Thank you.